What's up everyone, my name is Alex, I'm one of the co-founders of MyInvestingClub.com and I want to let you guys know about something special we're doing for our viewers on YouTube. So the most common question we get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did is we created a free two-hour mentorship course for the brand new trader. It's going to be available at MyInvestingClub.co, the link is going to be right here. This is a free webinar that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they start. I also wanna let you guys know about something that's very unique to MIC. So if you have any questions about trading or you're curious about trading or you don't know if MIC is the right fit for you, now you can text our head mentor, Tosh, whose number is gonna be right here, and he'll answer all the questions that you have in less than 24 hours. Thank you and enjoy the video. The pattern has basically been buy high and sell higher, right? And you, that's that's a joke, obviously. That's what chat room pumpers are doing. But, you know, buying the trends have been super mega profitable. Um, uh, I mean, Aries has been nailing it. I've actually been nailing a little bit of the, I call these glory longs. The stock, When the stock's just like go and go and go and go. That's like a glory line. That's the kind of long that you can just keep buying the dip over and over and over again. Yeah. And as you can just keep on buying until you're ready to like cool off. So um, we've had a lot of those glory longs right now. Um, I'm adding here because it's just so strong, right? Um, yeah. And so you can just basically, if you see like one or two higher lows on a stock, like you catch, wow, that's a higher low or you see a second higher low even, you can just assume that you're still early on the big move and join the trend. Like that's been a very profitable strategy this week. Can I give a, a ticker example of a glory? It's a glory, I'm calling them a glory long, not a glory line. But like, yeah, Gene, Gene, Voxel, EQ, these have just all been glory, uh, glory longs. Just the, just the dips hold and you can trust that they're gonna hold. Um, so yeah, all of the long patterns have been working. I mean, you buy a washout, you get rewarded. A first bounce, you get rewarded. VWAP reclaims, they've been happening. It's not even that probable of a setup. We're seeing like at least a 50-50 rate on VWAP reclaims this week. So what do I think we're going to see? Uh, so we're starting to see the stronger buyer's market. I think that's good for predicting what's next. What I'm doing is I'm keeping an eye to see if we get stronger or if we just tail back into the seller's market. I think if we tell, tell back into the seller's market, it's better for everybody, longs and shorts included. But if we get into the buyer's market, that's gonna really set up a nice, like I, this is where I like to make money. I like to make money as we enter, like after the buyer's market has started, I make money on longs. After the seller's market just started is where I make a lot of money on the shorts. So if we, get, if we can get a little bit stronger and get kind of a little bit more just straight up ridiculous, that's when I, I'm actually going to get excited to be on bear scheme. <laughs> I'm going to be excited to start hitting these stocks once we get that once we get that that stock that just that gets annihilated and we get that one more that confirms that dude we're in a seller's market that that's what I'm going to be excited for so I'm hoping we get a little stronger so that we can get that that seller's that seller's market <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So if you go back to uh, 27th, right? 20, 27th of March, right? Right. That's this chart. I, I send you this, this. Yeah, exactly. This is the, the end of the day. So uh, what I was waiting, I, I said like in pre-market, the plan was I want to see a push to 150 to, or 250 and then fail. Uh, what I did is I went back on, on demand, like uh, using uh, Tinkoswim, and they go to the end of the day. I, I draw my lines here. Do you see this is a deadline at 177? So now from this day, I know like all people who bought over 177, most likely they're still trapped on this sticker. So I wait, like I, I want to see like, for example, like today I want to see a push, a squeeze all the way to these levels and then I can use them as in order for these stocks to but the thing is, it didn't push. Uh, it pushed like in pre-market, I think, yeah, to 130, and it and it faded, right? Today, right. 130 it faded. So I didn't touch it actually. And uh, here, here's my, yeah, it faded. And then what happened? Uh, actually, these trades like starters, and somehow it's a promo trade. To be honest, they shouldn't be shorting near one dollar at all. But it is what it is. So I shorted here, I cut it, and they cut it, and then I was waiting for 177. And then when it failed, like you see after the halt, it, it failed and then it faded. But the thing is, the problem also, this one, because it traded so much volume, so many people are again today trapped. Like it didn't make it like a fade. You see what I mean, right? But if the same example, like let's say in pre-market, it pushed all the, all the way to 150, 170, failed, man, it have probability of eight out of 10, it's gonna fade all day. 
I mean, this is how you do it. So you see me sometimes like I trade pre-market. Sometimes I avoid, I wait for the open push. I need to, I, I need, I need for the price to get to my levels. And then when it fails, like I just start short. So I use starters, then I add to winners and so on. So yeah, this is, this is one example, but today this one is just very, very tricky because it traded so much volume. So many people are trapped like here and yeah. So when you're tr trading it down here, do you trade like, because you know that like 177, like that kind of area, the 150 to 177, that's more yeah. of the ideal trade. If you, if you, if it's just down here at one, do you trade this smaller than like you would up here? Or yeah, yeah, actually all these positions, like the, uh, they are starters only. And if it broke down, the problem also I'm trading on trade zero, I can't even add under $1. So it was just Good. a small size. And best, best case scenario for me, it was, I will cover it. 0.85 cents, 85 cents. So that's the best case scenario. Yeah. So the, today's one, I just had some pre-market trading here, kind of FOMO because I wanted to buy this. I was like, dude, I know the chat room is going to buy this one. I'm like, I should totally just buy it first. <laughs> and, then, and then I saw him buy it and I almost bought it too. Like, but I'm like, I can't, I can't fucking do that. Like, I just can't fucking do that. But of course, like it went. And so I had a little bit of FOMO. So I, you know, I tried to get like a, I bought the dip and I sold it. Like, you know, um, I, I, I only got like a half off here. Tried to buy it again, and of course it stopped, so I sold it. Um, and then I went to short it, and I quickly covered it um, because we're getting too. I, I shorted it because you know, like if we're gonna fail, if we're gonna, I, the whole basis of this trade is I thought we were gonna give this move back. I thought this move was just chat room created, and that right at the open we were going to like have the parallel move down. But I thought like it might just happen pre market and and, and just fuck everybody who wanted to wait for the open. So I wanted to give it a chance to to tank pre-market. It didn't happen. I covered it. Um, and thankfully it didn't tank here right before the open. So right as the open, we push up, I wait for it to stuff nine and I get some shorts off at eight, eight fifty. I add as it breaks this low, it halts. Um, you know, I, I cover all of it here, which sucks. Like, I, you know, I, I, I should have waited a little bit more, but again, th this is not an ideal open for the halt at seven sixty when it opens at seven forty. That's not, oh, good. Thank you for bringing this up. I want to I wanna talk about this here. LGHL today was not a 19,000 share float, guys. No. You can't just trust everything that you read, right? Like if Yahoo Finance and Finviz both said 19,000 float, but here, this is when you have to look at the chart and be like, does it trade like a 19,000 share float? A 19,000 share float? It's going to have like a $2 spread. Like if this was a 19,000 <laughs> float, the bid would be six and the ask would be like 850. Like, and it would be like moving like, yeah, like you'll be able to tell by the price action what the float is. I estimate this float to be within two to six million shares. Um, probably lower, probably like two to four or two to five. I could probably narrow it down, but it's somewhere in there is my guess. And so that's kind of basically how I was trading it. And so that's actually another, that's actually, that actually like that, that was a, a domino on the scale for me. The fact that it said 19,000 share float, that really like that kind of added a jelly bean into like how I drew up the story on this stock. I thought that people would get overly long crowded. I'm like, people are going to think, oh, 19,000 share float, that's a buy. And so I was like, you know, I bet this attracts a long crowd. And of course, uh, chat rooms bought it at the open. I was like, and it's stuffed. And they're like, okay, it's looking like a duck, quacking like a duck, you know, smelling like a duck. And I'm like, you know what? It's probably a duck. So I added to the winner at eight. I didn't like the, I didn't like the, the not opening sub seven. Yeah. If you really want to know, you can dig into the filings, but you know, you can normally get an idea by how it's trading too. Yeah. You have to do nice nice yeah. Thanks. And I actually, Understood. Yeah, I, I got this other ad here. I, I, I almost got one more. It popped back up to seven and I almost had it, but I, I had it in my teeth that I was like, dude, I just made, I just made a full day's pay on one trade in the first 15 minutes. I, I'm, I'm shutting the book down and I left. So I, I just, I, I was really excited to do that. I was like, I love that when that happens, I'm going to make sure I take, take the day. So anyway, that was that trade. Um, Ecore. I just wanted to show this one. This is a trade I took. Stop, save lives. This one ended up going way higher, I think, um, if I remember correctly. But I just want to point out this trade. This is the first resistance short that I took on this. Um, on this, I thought this was pretty high and steep and fast. That this might, that this should reject. 
it didn't. And this, you still, uh, you just stop out, right? You just have to stop out um, when your idea doesn't work. And I just want to, this stop looks glorious, right? This stop looks stupid, right? They're the same stop. Like, just because one looks good, you can't judge a stop really based on what it does in hindsight. The thing is, I, like, I stopped here and it looks fucking stupid. But this stop is the same stop as this one. If this stop, this one would look stupid. But there, like, I can't just not stop because one stuffed me one time, right? You have to not be afraid about stopping out. And that's why I wanted to include this one. Just because this one looks good, the other one looks shitty, but they're the same stuff. I only use one minute charts. Uh, yeah, and so, yeah, so let's get back to faders. Uh, so, sorry that took, I just had a lot of trades this week. Yeah, it's okay. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.